Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. Anyone who watches fishing shows is familiar with structure fishing. At times, it's all we talk about. Still, you have to admit, it has a lot of validity. Rocks, wood, transitions, and other features attract fish, particularly when they form a change in the surrounding topography. But is there too much of a good thing? It's surprising to see the number of anglers who bypass heavy structure fearing a permanent hang-up. A pile of rocks and boulders can be a threatening sight, but can also hold impressive fish. Skimming over the situation will keep you out of the snag zone and quite possibly out of the strike zone as well. When you go looking for trouble, there's a good chance you'll find it. In pressured lakes, fish look for the heaviest available cover. This smallmouth, for instance, is living the good life in a forest of trees. The same is true in rivers, where trout demand overhead protection. Some are more particular than others. Rainbows will venture into the open, while brown trout, like the one under the log, seldom stick their necks out. The best way to deal with heavy cover is to move in close and present bait in a near vertical drop using heavy tackle. And there are limits to what you can get away with. In this jungle of trees, just imagine trying to haul out one of these big Chinook salmon. It's safe to say that anyone with some fishing experience is also familiar with structure fishing. The subject of numerous fishing shows and magazine articles, it's an accepted fact that fish relate to changes in their environment. Most of these are well documented and easily recognized. Rocks, trees, man-made features and so on. At the same time, a few guys seem to break the rules of catching fish on what appears to be a featureless flat. It's quite likely they've stumbled upon a secret hotspot, indeed a transition zone. This refers to a location where a change in bottom composition occurs. Wind, shoreline features and incoming rivers set up currents, depositing sediments in distinct patterns. Even subtle changes in density will hold forage and attract fish. A good indicator is the sudden appearance of weed growth, however sparse. Changes in weed type also factor in. More dramatically, transitions can be a step up from sand to gravel or in the size of rocks. Though difficult to locate, keep a close eye on your fish finder and use a GPS to record findings. Remember, soft and hard bottoms reflect sound waves differently. Of course, marking and catching fish in the middle of nowhere is always a good sign. By definition, underwater structure is a change in surrounding topography, while cover refers to features that provide shade and security. Fishing or filming, if you can see them, it stands to reason they can see you. To overcome this problem, simply put some form of underwater cover between yourself and the fish. Strange as it may seem, it doesn't have to be much. A single rock, branch, or strand of weed is enough to allow you this close to most elusive fish out there. Even though you're still visible, there's a calming effect. It's like a security blanket to the fish. That's how we're able to get shots like these. Now, watch our drifting bait, refused until it reaches the comfort zone of that very same patch of debris. Here it is again. Next drift, same thing. It's just that dramatic. Without question, the very best overhead cover is man-made. While respecting private property, docks, anchored boats, and boathouses are classic places to find fish on any lake. Bear in mind, these are wild fish on a pressured cottage lake, and certainly not pet fish at the dock. Even so, this is exactly how we're able to film in this situation. Bottom line is, when you put the right type of cover between yourself and the fish, you can get away with anything.